in this video we are going to see how you can deploy your full stack mon application to do this you have two ways you can deploy your both front end and back end into the same server and the second way is you can deploy your back end separately and front end separately for instance of this video we are going to follow up the second approach where we can deploy our back end and front end separately to deploy our back end application we will be using render.com and to deploy our front end application we will be using versal.com so let me first walk you through my code. I have one folder named as full stack app notes where I have two subfolder backend and frontend. Inside my backend folder I have index.js where I am creating express application and then I am listening it to port 8080 as you can see here. Next I have this db.js file where I am connecting my local mongodb with my application. Next I have Three models, image model, notes model, and user model. Seen, I have three routes, image routes, note route, and user routes. In this images folder, I am storing the image, which I am showing it here. Inside this middleware folder, I have this auth middleware, which I am using it for authentication. Now, let's start deploying our application. So, as you can see, we are connecting our application with our local MongoDB. So this database is present in our local machine, which will not work when we will deploy our application. To solve this issue, we have to change this string to Mongo Atlas. Mongo Atlas is just the cloud version of your local MongoDB. You need to type Mongo Atlas. You can go with this first link. Now down here, you can see this button try free. Click on this. Now in this sign up page, you can click on this option sign up with google choose your google account now click on this check box where it says i accept the privacy policy and the terms of service and click on the button submit So by default, it has selected this option, but go with this option, which is free and click on this button, create. Now, this page is very important where you will be writing your username. So my recommendation is keep this username and password as simple as possible because to access our database, we will be requiring this username and password. And then click on this button, create user. Now, down here, you can see it is saying add entries to your IP address. But here you can also see your IP address is already added. Now click on this button, finish and close. Click on this button, go to overview. You are in MongoDB Atlas. Now you can see this button connect. If you don't see this button here, you can always go to this database and then you will definitely see this button create. Now click on this button create. From here, choose this first option drivers. Now from here, we will be using our Node.js driver and then copy this string, write this string. Now in this string, this is your username and this is your password. So you need to type your password here. Before this question mark, you need to write your database name. So I am writing notes. We are running our backend and it is saying connected to MongoDB. Now come back to your MongoDB Atlas and then click here, close. Click on this button, Browse Collections. Now you can see our notes database, which we have created here, which we have created here. It is present in our MongoDB Atlas. So we are done with step one. Now let's move towards step two. So you can see we are storing our username and password. If we will directly push this, to our github so anybody can access our username and password so what we can do is we will create a dot env file where we will store our this mongodb atlas url so we will write something like this mongo url is equal to then copy this string and paste it here now in order to use dot env in your backend application what you need to do is uh, go to your chrome type here npm i dot env 
click on this first link and then copy this stop your application paste the command and hit enter now it is installed go to your package.json and you can see .dnv is installing your dependencies now you can restart your application now to use this mongo url what you need to do is first come to this documentation and you can see this required.env.config copy this line paste it here right here process.env mongo url make sure this spelling matches with this spelling so now there are few more things uh, if you will go inside this index.js, uh, we can also put this port in our .env file. So let's do that. So for this, you need to require it. As I'm using JSON web token, there is something like secret key here. So this is my secret key. So what I can do, I can keep this secret key into my .env file. Instead of this, I will uh, take it from my .env file. This secret key, I will also do it here. So anything that you think that you don't want to share with others or when you push your code into GitHub, you can keep that thing inside uh, this .env file and then you can ignore this .env file. So how you will do that? You will uh, create a new file and write git ignore .env. Now, whenever you make changes in your .env file, it is very important that you restart your server. Otherwise, some functionality will not work. Now, all this code, we need to push this into our GitHub. So now let's go to our GitHub. From here, you can create a new repository. Type your repository name. Choose Honor. Make sure your repository is public and then click on this button, create repository. Now from here, to push this code into your GitHub, so write this command, type git init, copy this and paste it here. Copy this and paste it here. Now write git add, git commit hyphen m type your commit ready to deploy then git push origin main uh, now our code is pushed to main branch now go to github refresh this all our code is present here now it's time to deploy if you are using render.com for the first time, you need to sign up first. So since I am already a user, I can simply log in. And then I will be in the dashboard.render.com. To deploy a new application, what you can do? Uh, click on this button new and then cl click on this button web service. From here, click on this button next. Uh, so this is was our newly created repository. Click on this button connect from here. You can uh, type your service name. You can keep this option as it is, but you can also uh, choose this. I'm choosing this Singapore, Southeast Asia. Here in this option, it is saying which branch you want to deploy. So since we have only one branch, which is main branch, uh, it is present over here. And we want to deploy this. So we will keep it as it is. So this is not required. It is asking for our web service. We will be using node. Then 
it is stay saying that it is typically a script that install your libraries. To install our libraries, we write npm install. Now it is saying what is the command to start your application. So we will be writing node index.js. Now by default, it will be choosing the starter mode, but uh, you can always go to this mode, which is free. And then here it is giving the options for environment variables. Yes, we do have environment variables. So we will paste all these environment variables one by one. Click on this button, add environment variable. Now click on this button, create web service. Now since it is giving us a free service, so it will take some time, so wait for it. At the end, when you see this message, your service is live, that means you have successfully deployed your backend application. Here you will get your deployed link. So this is our deployed link. This is useful when you will be performing your Axios request or patch request. We are done with our backend. Now let's go to our frontend. Inside frontend, I am creating my React application. Inside this SRC, I have created one file which is saying url.js where first of all I was using my local host. Now I will be using my deployed link. The benefit of creating this url.js is firstly I was using my local host but since now I have deployed it now I can use this link. So wherever I am using my local host link I can directly replace it to my deployed link and I don't need to go to every file uh, and change my uh, local host link to deployed link. I can change it one place and I can export this base URL and I can import this wherever I did. Uh, as you can see in login.js, I need deployed link. So I'm uh, importing it as base URL and uh, the rest of the thing remains the same. Now let's see our front end application is working as expected or not. So since it is running successfully, we can go and check. So this is our front end application. Let's see everything is working fine or not. So we will go to this button, sign up. And here we will sign up first. We will write our name. Click on this button, sign up. So it is saying an error occurred. Now let's see what is the error. Sign up and an error occurred is coming from here. To fix this error, come back to your MongoDB Atlas. Go to this option, Network Access. From here, click on this button, Add IP Address. And then click on this button, Allow Access from Anywhere. And then click on this button, Confirm. So it will take some time. Now you can see the status is active. Now what if you want to check, is there any error in your backend application? So what you can do, you can come to your dashboard and click on the service name and then Click on this button, Logs. Now, here it is saying connected to MongoDB, but before that, it was saying uh, error in connected MongoDB. So this error was because our network, we have not given the network access. So after giving the network access, it is saying that connected to MongoDB. Now, let's see whether it is working or not. Click on this button, Sign Up. And it is saying registration successful. Now go to this login and write your email and password and click on this button sign in. You have signed in. Now you can go to this route which is add note. Now you can see our uh, all the functionalities are working. Now it's time to deploy our front-end application. To do that, I am using Versal. If you are not already logged in, you can go and sign up first and then click on this button, Login. I will continue it with GitHub. So this was my previous deployment. Click on this integrated terminal. Now here, type Versal and hit Enter. So there are two ways to deploy your application. 
you can use command line interface which is cli deployment or you can go and deploy it manually so uh, cli is very easy uh, so after you have written that it is saying that setup and deploy so it is saying that yes this is the folder structure where your application is present yes in my front end my application is present so i will hit enter it will automatically take y as the option now it is saying that which scope do you want to deploy it so uma sahani is my username i will hit enter yes in this account only i want to deploy it so it is saying that link to the existing project that means is your project is already deployed no i am deploying it for the first time so i will click n that means no so it will ask for your project name so here i will type my project name and then hit enter now it is saying uh, this is the directory it is located located yes i will hit enter now it is setting up the project want to modify the setting we will click no now you can see uh, the extra virtual folder is created here dot virtual and then it is saying deployed to production run virtual hyphen hyphen prod so we will run this command now to deploy our application in production now at the end it will give us the production link you can press control and then click it from your mouse and click on this button open to open the link now you can see our application is deployed and uh, everything will work as expected let's check that you are signed in and when we will go to notes our previous note is present and we can also write another note click on this button save so this was all about deploying your monstack application where we have deployed our front end and back end separately if you have any questions you can write in the comment section below and if you like this video please hit the like button now let's talk about the edge case which is what if you made some changes in your back end code i have corrected the spelling connecting here so if you have made any changes in your back end code then what you can do you can push the code into your github you can type git add git commit hyper m and write made changes and then write git push origin name now this changes will be pushed to your github and from your github this render will automatically uh, predict the changes and it uh, it will work on the updated code so you don't need to deploy your backend application again after making changes just push your code to github so this was about backend but this front end application we have not pushed to uh, our github so what we have to do in our front end application if we made some changes in our application to update your deployment what you can write you can again write version and it will uh, automatically update your application then it will give you the preview link if all the changes are uploaded there you can run this command version hyphen hyphen prod so it will be deployed to your production again so this is how you can redeploy your application after making some changes thank you so much for watching this video till here if you have watched it let me know in the comment section below and you can also subscribe to this channel for more future videos